Hello and what is up YouTube? We are about 10 days away from Path of Exile Harvest and today we got a preview of Harvest crafting options. This is the first time that I've gotten to take a look at these. So let's take a look at them together. This should be exciting. A lot of us weren't that excited actually, to be honest, when we first saw the crafting options that were released. So let's see if this generates some more excitement uh, in the up and coming 3.11 Harvest League. In Path of Exile Harvest, you'll cultivate your sacred grove, grow dangerous monsters, and slay them to use their life force as valuable crafting resources. The potential of Harvest Crafts is immense and should open up powerful options for leveling and endgame players alike. Today's news post reveals a preview of some of the possible new crafting options. There are over 200 new crafts introduced in Harvest. These are just a few of the more exotic ones. Note that the life force values here are placeholders and arbitrary. Okay, so here we go. Pay no attention to the cost because that's all arbitrary. Okay, so the first one, sacrifice a map to gain three Alva missions. Okay, so we're going to be able to... Okay. We're going to be able to sacrifice useless leftover maps that we no longer want, that we can't trade, that we don't want to use to gain master missions. Look at this. These, these first four are all the same. Sacrifice a map to gain Einhar missions. Sacrifice a map to gain Jun missions. Sacrifice a map to gain Zana missions. This is brilliant. GGG, hey, give yourselves a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, this ought to be exciting. Regardless if you play Trade League, if you play SSF, if you play with friends in private leagues, if you play some sort of amalgamation of any of those, if you play Path of Exile, this is good news. All of us, all of us leave leagues with maps. It doesn't matter. For some of us, it's thousands. For others, it's hundreds. For others of it's dozens. It doesn't matter. All of us leave leagues with maps in our stash tab that we have zero intention to run. This is brilliant. We are now turning maps themselves into a sort of crafting option, into a sort of crafting resource where you can turn maps into master's missions. Like, this is fantastic. O over a year ago, so many of us were crying out for more player agency. Hey, I want to tackle the stuff that I like to tackle inside Path of Exile. There's a lot of stuff inside Path of Exile. Some of us like to walk up to the buffet that is Path of Exile now in the 3.0 life cycle. And we just like to sample everything. You know, we like to not just get one plate. We get two or three plates. And we just put everything that we can, you know, from the salad bar, from the dessert table, from the delve, you know, everything. I'm mixing all my metaphors here, but it's just because I'm too damn excited. Like, we like to grab everything, right? Some of us do. Others of us go to the buffet that is Path of Exile and we go, nope. I just want to go hit up that one thing that is Alva missions or that one thing that is Jun missions. And I just want to focus on that. This now allows us to do that. This is a customizable, craftable system that allows us to turn excess maps that we will otherwise never utilize into master's missions. Yes, there is the three to one vendor recipe and some players use that, but the vast majority of players still leave league with just tons of maps that they're never gonna use. And now we can turn these into missions that we will use, which is content that we wanna run. This is turning in maps, not, it's not even a specific map, it's just a map. Like if this is not a specific targeted map or if this isn't tiered or gated in any way, this is brilliant. This is, this is the, the single most glorious change they could have done for masters missions and for targeting content that we wanna target. This is absolutely brilliant. Chris Wilson and the whole team at GGG, whoever came up with this, take a bow. You, like, seriously, you, you deserve to take a bow. This is amazing. Okay, so on top of that, there's more stuff to look at, but that's already, that's like the best news that there could have been. All right, hype, hype meter engaged. Mr. LaForge, set hype to maximum. Okay, let's continue. Change a stack of fossils into a different type of fossil. Oh, now that's interesting. You can take all of your crap fossils that you don't necessarily want, and you can turn them into a different type of fossil. That's, that's pretty cool. Oh, and it's the same thing here for essences. Change a stack of essences into a different type of the same tier. Okay, so you can essentially now say, look, I've a, the game has dealt me RNG that's given me this type of fossil or this type of essence and I don't wanna interact with it. Now let's turn it into something different. 
Now let's turn it into something that's useful. And you know, what's amazing about these is uh, as long as we've got enough life force and as long as we've got the craft available to us inside our garden, you can keep redoing this, people. You can keep recycling. Eventually, you can turn terrible fossils into great fossils, you know, depending, again, on the outcomes of your RNG craft. Like, you can take a stack of essences that you didn't want because it's got, I don't know, just stats that you don't want to craft with and turn them into essences that you would want because there's going to be that one guaranteed role that you're looking for. This is, again, taking content that's already in the game, right? It's reusing content. GGG is the master of that. And it's allowing us to have more player agency over what's already in the game. I, This is... This is brilliant. This this page right here, this is enough to turn me on for Harvest for the whole league. But there's more. Let's go take a look at what's more. All right, so the second page that we've got today says change a stack of essences into a different tier. Okay, that's the same. That's what we just saw. Then change a stack of oils into a different color of oil. Oh, no, that's... Again, if that's RNG and you can do that anywhere, like you could be taking clear and sepia oils and turning them into gold. <laughs> Like, this is brilliant. Like, there's going to be some players who don't even slay monsters anymore. I mean, you got to slay monsters inside your garden, right? But there's going to be some players who have minimal amount of slaying of monsters. And they're just in here, like, flipping stacks of different currency that they've got. This is a whole new brand of gambling. MBX, are you watching? Are you watching MBX? This is a whole new brand of gambling. Slippery Jim, are you watching? I am watching and waiting for you guys to come out with, hello guys, Slippery Jim here, and we're turning in 10,000 stacks of oils into something else. Like, this is going to be brilliant. I love this. You can change a stack of catalysts into a different type of catalyst. So if you've got, again, crap catalysts that you don't like what the game has given you, you can turn it into something different. This is great. Change a map into a random map fragments based on its tier. Okay. That's interesting. So based on the tier, we'll get tier fragments. So probably like tier ones and stuff, that's going to be like Edziri fragments, right? Like basic Edziri fragments, maybe, right? But it's fragments. It's not splinters. So that that matters. It's going to be fragments, which means the higher tier we go, the more fragments we could get. That's pretty cool. I wonder, I wonder all the specifics of that. I wonder, like, are we going to be able to unlock like the Pale Council with that as well? I would assume so because those are fragments. We could fight Shaper early on. I wonder if, like, there are going to be races, right? You know how there are races to, like, first Shaper kill, first Cirrus kill, etc. I wonder if there are going to be races that use this as a mechanism to get to an endgame boss earlier than what you would otherwise naturally get to. That's, again, that's really, really, like, game-changing. Like, imagine if you get yourself a Shaper set early before you've pushed into Shaper. Like, that's... Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff there. Okay, let's. there's too much stuff here. Let's continue. Change a map into random map currency based on its tier. Okay, so that's going to be chisels. That's going to be other map currency. Oh, that maybe that maybe that could actually be highly valuable in SSF. I'm going to say that's an SSF thing. I could be missing it for Trade League, but I'm going to say for SSF, especially for map currencies that just aren't dropping for you that you really need. Let's say, for instance, like top tier. Um, oh, the word is escaping me. Well, uh, sextants. Like if you're, if you're just not getting any sextants, right? That, that could work. Change a map. into. I love that maps are now crafting. Maps, access crappy maps that you're never going to sell, you're never going to get rid of, you're never going to trade in, you're never going to vendor. It is now crafting material. I love that. Okay, lastly, change a map into a random scarab based on its tier. Oh my goodness. Okay, I like that. This is going to be bonkers. Like you just turned a map into a metamorph essentially, right? We used to farm metamorphs in order to get scarabs, right? There were all sorts of things that you'd farm to get scarabs. But the point being, like you can now take a crappy map and turn it into a random scarab that you can then go and run the type of content that you want to run as a player okay that's that's the end of the announcement you can find out more about crafting in our faq here we've already walked through that faq this is amazing this is amazing guys at ggg if you would have shown us this stuff in the trailer chris and, and in chris and ziggy d's you know uh q a where i was like i'm not seeing any of these crafts these crafts i can see as game breaking these crafts i can see as more powerful than what we've ever seen before targeting your missions and then custom changing all of these different crafting currencies into something that you would like because we've all got thousands of different fragments and currencies that we don't use and maps that we don't use and now we're going to be able to turn those into things that we can use 
into content that we do want to play. I think this is this is two thumbs up, not just for trade league purposes, but for playing purposes, for actually engaging and playing with the game. Like this is two thumbs up. Anyway, that's my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Drop us a comment down below. I'm going to go get excited and plan out what content I want to run for 3.11 because we can target our content now with excess maps. This is this is probably the coolest change that I've ever seen in Path of Exile. That, I don't, okay, maybe I'm being hyperbolic. Would I rather have this or would I rather have Synthesis back? I'm going to be a prisoner of the moment. I think I would rather be able to sacrifice my maps to be able to do specific Masters missions. Okay, that's enough hype from me. I hope 3.11 is the league a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.